Saludos amigos, ¿cómo están? Nuevamente Daniel Sicar, from here, from our channel, a channel dedicated just to please you guys in everything related with the English process, okay? The process of learning English, a beautiful language, with you all, of course. Please do not forget to subscribe uh, while you cruise all these V2 level topics. They are very interesting, they are very effective for improving your English. My name is Daniel Sicar, and we just keep going and keep learning with this. Today's topic is going to be about a little bit related to phonetics, the way we pronounce the words. And sometimes those words are like false friends, they fool us. So I want you just to have clear some of them so you don't get into you don't get into that trap, okay? You can escape from that trap. So we will have a list, vamos a tener, as you can see in this image, una lista de palabras similares en pronunciación son Homophone, homophones words, okay? Homophone words, the homophones, see the homophones, that give us like same, sometimes same pronunciation, but the meaning is different, the meaning and the spelling. So we're going to work on those. So let's have a look at these words right here. Tenemos como tal this little dark blue chart. And we start with board. Okay. We will see board as a noun. Y board as an adjective. Entonces tenemos board que es a plank of wood. ¿Sí? Tal, a plank of wood es una pila o un pedazo de madera. Right? A plank of wood. It could be a board. ¿no? La misma parte de una, una tabla. Right? En board as, a, as an adjective como aburrido. Right? Estar aburrido. So characterize, right? Characterized by boredom, so caracterizado por aburrimiento, characterized by boredom, y la de arriba a plank of wood, es como tal lo que es la madera. So the simple sentence, on the right signs, just to understand these words a little bit better, because they are not easy, they are actually complicated, are the following. So for the plank of wood, in this case board, which spells B-O-A-R-D, is to finish building your bookshelf, I need one more board. Es otra tabla como tal, ¿sí? Or, eh, very good. So you see, to finish building your bookshelf, I need one more board. Una tabla más. And the sentence for board, the aburrido, as an adjective, the adjective is, the movie was terrible, it bored me. Me aburrió. The movie was terrible, it bored me, it bored me. Now we're going to see another word, in este caso break, break as a noun, right? Break as a noun, es el freno como tal, como sustantivo, and break de romper, verbo. These two fool us sometimes, nos engañan a veces, so here they are, no? Break, that spells B-R-A-K-E, and break that is spells B R A B R E A K. You see, they are kind of complicated. The definition, right? A mechanism that causes a vehicle to stop. Hablando de los frenos, a vehicle that causes a, ve a vehicle to stop. A, I mean, a mechanism. Sorry. And the other one is to smash into pieces. De romper is to smash, golpear en pedazos, or to aplastar, to smash into pieces. The sentences are, for the one above, is step on the brake, step on the brake. Si, presione o frene como tal, parece en el freno. You don't want to hit the pedestrian. Usted no cree, no quiere atropellar al peatón. Step on the brake, no? Parece en el freno, you don't want to hit the pedestrian. And the sentence for brake, de romper, is on the descanso is don't accidentally break the window throwing your ball. No vaya accidentalmente a romper la ventana lanzando la pelota. Don't accidentally break the window throwing your ball. Very good. Continuamos con otras parejitas. Por ejemplo, heel, el verbo contra heel, de, 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 de tacón, de talón en este caso. De talón es, es uno de los top eh, más engañosos, ¿no? Heel, de curar. Contra heel de talón, right? Or heel in this part. So, to restore to health, ¿no? Aliviar, curar. 
and heel to hind part of your foot, right? That's for heel. So, for example, se hinde herir alguna parte de su pie. This slave is known to heal wounds more quickly. Este esclavo, no? This self, this self, sorry, this self is known to heal wounds more quickly. Self, we'll have to look at it. Not sure about that one. Is known, es conocido por aliviar, por curar heridas más rápido. We will have to check the term of self. Self, self, I don't know how to pronounce it. So, if you can leave us your feedback, eh, just letting us know the meaning of that, I will really appreciate it. My heel hurts from these shoes. Okay? My heel, mi talón, sí, me duele con estos zapatos. So, my heel hurts from these shoes. Para el talón. Very good. Now we go back to see it's, right? The it is, the contraction de it is, contra it's, the adjective, the possessive adjective. Possessive adjective, for example, uh, the contraction of it is, okay? A word that shows possession, la parte del adjetivo. And the sentences are, it's a happy dog, okay? It is a happy dog, but it sounds like it's a happy dog. A happy dog. It sounds equally right to with its the possessive. No, the dog ate its bone, or the dog played with its bone. Se jugó con su huesito. Entonces ahí está el posesivo. Entonces no se dejen engañar. It's there to be. It is, or it's the possessive adjective. We start with lose, no? The adjective of not securely attached, de que esté suelto, de que algo esté más bien suelto. Contra lose, de, eh, what is the meaning is to fall, to fail to win, to fail to win, ¿sí? No ganar, ¿verdad? porque es perder, no? Lose. So the sentences that we have here is this shoe is loose. Este zapato está suelto, no? This shoe is loose, it doesn't fit, no, no, no me queda, o no queda. This shoe is loose, or these pants are loose, están sueltos. Usen ese loose para el adjetivo suelto. And the sentence, right, in this case for the verb, is if you play the lottery, you will probably lose. Si usted juega la lotería, probablemente perderá, ¿no? Es el verbo perder, to lose. Meat, which is meat, eh, animal tissue, or eh, the meat, uh, when we talk about the food, cuando hablamos de la comida, in meet de conocer, right? To come face to face to get to know someone. So, uh, in this case, the animal tissue used as food to come face to face. Las oraciones, the meat was savory. Era, ¿sí? Tenía sabor, right? Or the meat was savory, was nice to eat. And the sentence for meat de conocer sería, I will meet you at the coffee shop tomorrow. Or nice to meet you, pero, or I like to eat meat. So be careful with those two words. Those are homophones. Seguimos con peel, right? A loud sound, un sonido más bien alto. Con peel de pelar, right? To strip off the outer layer, lo que es el, la cobertura externa de algo, pelar. So the peel of church, right? Que es el sonido de, duro de las campanas. The peal of church bells woke me this morning. Ese sonido duro del fuerte de las campanas me despertó esta mañana. The peal of church bells woke me this morning. Or Joe, please peel these carrots. So exactly the same pronunciation, but the meaning is different. Be careful with those words. Principal, for example, the most important, no? As an adjective, lo más importante, lo principal, right? The principal as a noun es el rector del colegio, the head of a school. The principal es un principio, ¿no? Una verdad fundamental, a fundamental truth. Those are the three principles. You can notice the pronunciation es muy importante, pero es igual, pero la, the spelling is different. La forma en que se, esas tres se diferencian por la forma en que se escriben. Now the sentences. And for the first one, the principal lesson here is to learn the homophones, right? The principal lesson here is to learn homophones. The high school's principal, aquí ya está como sustantivo, el, lo que es el, el rector. The high school's principal, 
rector de, de bachillerato de high school is smart, es inteligente. And eh, abide by the principle of honesty. Si usted está hecho y concebido en el principio de la honestidad. Or I was taught the principle of honesty. Honesty. Of honesty, sorry. Now, we have there, the adjective, the possessive adjective. There, el adverbio there, el adverbio del lugar. And they are, there, there in contracción. There, right, there with us, there with us. Entonces, las tres se pueden ser confusas, pero vamos a ver algunas de las oraciones. Entonces, los significados, a word that shows possession, the possessive adjective there, an adverb of place, un adverbio de lugar, and a contraction of they are. With the sentences, it was the red car, ¿sí? fue su carro rojo, the red car, they own it, ellos son los dueños de ese carro. Right? The car is parked over there, Ah, es un adverbio de lugar. Estamos creando, mostrando dónde está parqueado el carro. So the context gives you, the context gives you that idea. They're happy. They're happy. Sería la pronunciación. They're. Practiquen bastante la pronunciación de la contracción. They're happy to be here. Entonces los tres pueden ser confusos, but at the same time, the sentences help you out with the context. Now we're finishing uh, here with through and through. Right? Very similar in, pro in pronunciation. One is the verb, the other is the preposition. Past tense of throw, through, the first through. And the preposition is a word that indicates a passage, un pasaje a través de algo. So the sentence is Carl threw the football. No? Carl tiró lo que es la bola de fútbol. Through, pasado de throw. And Lynn drove through the tunnel. Manejó a través del tunnel. ¿no? Lean drove through the tunnel. Two, and to finish with the two combo, con el combo de los two, right? Two as a preposition, two as an adverb, two as another adverb, of course. Plus two, the adjective of the number. The preposition, a word meaning also, que es un conector, más que más un adverbio es un conector. And a word meaning excessively, excessively, that's the adverb of degree. Eso es un adverbio de grado. And a number of following one, right? A number following one. To be or not to be, no? Shakespeare, I don't know if you remember that. So it will be the preposition in verbos infinitivos. My twin has brown hair too. Ahí está como conector de adición. My twin has brown hair too. Va normalmente al final. Tiene pelo café también. Castaño. I ate too much. Comí demasiado. I ate too much. Same pronunciation, pero en esta vez lo vemos como adverbio de grado. And I have two cats. Tengo dos gatos. So that's it, guys. I mean, this is the topic about the homophones, or the most common homophone words, homophones words. We want you to practice. We want you to stay connected with us. Please subscribe, try to stay focused with all these topics, practice at home or at work, and we will just continue giving you more and more concepts, okay? Repeat over and over again these videos. My name is Daniel Sicard, and we will continue with these B2 level topics. Take care and see you next time.